Welcome to Veterans Forum, a program by veterans, about veterans, for veterans and their families. I'm your co-host, Bob West, with Ray Chattery and Jerry Devlin. Our goal is to provide important information on legislation, benefits, support, and activities for you and your family by interviewing leaders in our community. Jerry, who do we have with us today? We're really honored tonight to have a Delegate Jaron Levi, uh, who represents District 23A in, in the House of Delegates. And, uh, Jaron is sort of a coast-to-coast -coast phenomenon. This show, you know, broadcasts coast-to-coast -coast from Allen Pond to Fox Hill Lake. <laughs> but actually, Jaron came to us by way of uh, Chicago, like President Obama, but she was educated in the University of California at Berkeley and then graduated from uh, Howard University Law School in the nation's capital. Uh, she's an assistant legislative director for the AFL-CIO downtown, used to be a lobbyist for the labor union, uh, for the laborers union, and has a very wide experience in legislation and serves in Annapolis on the powerful House Judiciary Committee. We're really honored to have you with us tonight, Jaron. Thank you, and I didn't know all of that about my background. That's right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Judge Devlin. Well, uh, thank you, and uh, welcome to our show. Uh, as you know, we're interested in veterans legislation, and we're getting ready for a new legislative year. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you can tell us uh, a little bit of the highlights of what, what to expect this year. Well, um, most of the year will be predominated by the budget, obviously. Uh, the state is facing some uh, a very difficult budget year this year. Uh, although revenues in the state have stabilized, we still have a number of challenges up ahead. Uh, but as in past years, uh, the veteran community is certainly a priority uh, for the outlay of state dollars. I think uh, some of the priorities you have identified, uh, allowing nonprofits to use, uh, to, to raise, fundraise through slot machines at your uh, uh, veterans halls are, are key. Um, I also think some of the behavioral health issues for veterans will continue to be a priority. They were a priority last year. Uh, we authorized $2.3 million to deal with some of the veterans uh, issues and behavioral health issues for those veterans returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, as you know, they have a higher than average suicide rate, so that is certainly a priority uh, for the state and really the nation. Um, so that continues to be a priority. Um, although I know that uh, the veterans community is very interested in the retirement income of veterans, I think um, because of some of the budget issues, although that is a priority, we, will, we may face some challenges this year on that, on that issue. And uh, we also uh, are very interested in uh, Charlotte Hall because right now uh, the uh, number of people in Charlotte Hall it are, is increasing mm -hmm. and we're looking for uh, another f facility. Isn't that right, Ray? Yes, right. Yeah, I was really surprised. Uh, we have the new, we got the new census. Um, it was a 504 bed facility and of course they took some of the areas and that's now 462 bed facility and right now they're almost at 90 percent capacity mm -hmm. and i served on the commission for nine years mm -hmm. uh, and we were told that when they got to that 90 percent category they were going to very strongly consider having another veterans home in the state uh, eastern shore Baltimore City or Baltimore County and Western Maryland. They were the three places and they were going to try to get it where it's going to serve the be best part of the people. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know that it's kind of rough right now because of the budget constraints, but it's a long process to get going because the, when the federal government is also involved with this, the feds do two thirds and the Maryland pays one third. But right now it's to get a site it would be the first step, then get the design money, and then get the construction money. Mm -hmm. So right now, is there any move at all anywhere to where they might be leaning to get a, a, a veteran's home, new one? Um, I know that continues to be a priority um, and one that the state is looking looking at. Right. Um, I, I would say, as you have 
correctly identified, we do face some budget issues this year. Uh, but I do think this, you know, the state and certainly I want to uh, 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 honor our commitment to our veterans okay. and make sure that they have the services they need. Um, earlier this year, the lieutenant govern governor uh, launched a new website uh, to to be a clearinghouse for services to veterans. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I encourage all of the veterans out there to visit the website, www.veterans.maryland.gov, and it's a clearinghouse for all types of services. But as to a, a new home, I think that is an issue that we will continue to look at, continues to be a priority, and certainly um, as we look at the, the budget issues this year, I think we have to find ways to address it. Now, one thing we were told, um, at the at the veterans um, joint veterans committee of Maryland meeting, mm -hmm. uh, Fred Schimber was last year's chairman. He's also the chairman of the Maryland Veterans Commission, mm -hmm. saying that they have a the Washington ho, old Washington Hospital up there, mm -hmm. which is an ideal site mm -hmm. and which would be good. He, he needs some renovation, but the building's already there, so they won't have to start from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So. But I don't know about the population. I think it, we were looking at, they were saying Charlotte Hall is so far down south. Well, <laughs> Washington County is so far wild up. Wild West. Wild West. West. Yeah. And uh, I think they'd run into the same problem. So I think right now we'd, the central part of the state would probably be Baltimore area mm -hmm. in order to really get it. And one thing, you, I don't know whether you know, that you know there's almost 80,000 veterans in uh, Prince George's County. We have the largest veterans de uh, population in the state of Maryland. Wow. In the local subdivision. Yeah, we really are wall-to-wall -wall veterans. Right. Yeah, the, the problem, of course, Charlotte Hall. Charlotte Hall was the old military academy, Charlotte Hall Military Academy, and it was available. So that, that's why it's there, but it's always been very difficult for veterans in modest means to get down to Charlotte Hall. So for a long time, uh, the beds were badly underutilized, but now it seems to be, you know, as the World War II and Korean veterans grow older, uh, we, as Ray said a few minutes ago, it's pushing 90%. So, I mean, that, that now has given a, an impetus. In recent years, people was like, like kind of on the back burner. If you, if you asked about Charlotte Hall, you'd say, well, get the beds filled and we'll do something about it. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting the beds filled and now is pretty close to the time. And I think the seed money will have to come forward pretty soon because it's a need. Well, I think I, I think I can say unequivocally that um, certainly your District 23 representatives are strong supporters right. of, of veterans and um, we want to see that issue addressed. Now whether it'll be this year, it, it's just unclear, right. but I think we ought to continue to make steady progress towards uh, finding more capacity in the state. So we can continue to make steady progress towards that goal, I think. Um, you should continue to raise it um, with with all of us, um, and you know as we proceed, as budget di conditions get get better, uh, this is this most certainly I'm sure will be a priority. And one thing is a feather in our cap about Charlotte Hall is once they really got going down there, uh, st other <laughs> states were coming to use our facility here in Maryland as a model. Mm -hmm. We want to make ours like yours. Mm -hmm. It was so. See, it's a beautiful. You go down facility. there in the spring. Oh, yeah. You think like you're driving up to the Comfort Inn or the Holiday Inn, <laughs> right. one of the very you know well kept mm -hmm. hotels, the Hiltons. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just absolutely, especially in the spring with all the flowers. It's just gorgeous down there. Yeah, I know right? it's beautiful. I know the veterans who who who. Who, who are there? But I think enjoy what we have facility. to do now, uh, Delegate Levi, is that we have to start laying the groundwork <clears throat> now for, to, for, to get this so that it's not new three years from now. No, we've been talking about this for three years. Let's start getting something rolling because, as I say, it's a long process. Like in 1975, they got Charlotte Hall approved. The first veteran didn't move in until 1985. Right. Ten years. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. It's a long cycle, and that's why I say right. we should, you know, I think you should strive to make steady progress every year. And as I've been encouraging during the tight fiscal times, I've been encouraging all organizations, 